may sound silly to some people, but I've experienced it myself. I know Laura's experienced. I know everybody on the panels has experienced this. And I know that somebody's watching this right now. And I just want you to know that it can be stopped. And it's that simple. And if you ask Tim to come in your heart, he will. And he'll change your life. And like Laura said, I'm like you. Gone. Eight years, nothing. The minute, the minute he showed up and solved my problem, it's gone. I don't, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to go back. I don't have to revisit it. I don't have to. Now, what is our job? It's a living testimony. And that's what Joe has started. And that's what we're going to continue to do because this is how we're going to reach people in the end times. Thank you. Amen. I, one more thing. I got to ask you this. What was it? I'm so curious. What was it? You're, you're, you're in this movement and we all have the story. We all have that pinnacle where it just it got too much, something happened, and you're, you found out who your Lord and Savior truly was. And, and it's, it, that's always an interesting time because your whole life changes. And I, I've seen through my experience and others, people that we've had on here, something, something typically is pretty intense before you find the truth. Tell us a little bit about that, about w w what happened there. Basically, um there were more attacks taking place, more physical attacks, more things that were not making sense, uh, lies that these beings were telling us and so on. Um, so it got quite bad to the extent where my mother was being harassed day and night. So she went to the doctor and mm. asked for some sleeping pills. No. She thought that might help. And... The doctor asked why. Being the good um, New Age evangelist that my mum was, she told the doctor all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the doctor uh -oh. said it was schizophrenic. Um, and there had been such a lot of things going on in the house. My mother was harassed all the time. The fires took place in the house. It, it was just what people might describe poltergeist activity, but obviously we know is demonic so bad that yes she was sleep deprived and yes she was at her wits end um mm, and, and quite ill so she was put into a psychiatric hospital oh, no. um that's horrible now, at this time at this time i was now living with my partner who's now my husband paul and um i was at university and i met a christian and she was lovely. She kept asking me to her church. I was not interested. As far as I was concerned, Jesus was a reincarnated alien, um, et cetera, et cetera. The Bible was nonsense, et cetera. I wanted nothing to do with it. But she was very nice, and she kept asking me. Um, then she said, a visiting Christian evangelist is coming who has the gift of prophecy and the gift of healing. And would you like to come to that? So I will, yes. <laughs> because to me, I was all that type of activity. And I just thought, well, these people think they're Christians, but they obviously they think Jesus is doing all this stuff, but it's just spirits they're dealing with. Um, they just think it's Jesus. Because we believed in Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. and Christ consciousness was taught to us um, that didn't mean Jesus Christ at all. So... I went along there and um, basically what happened was I was blown away. The atmosphere was such that I had never felt. Again, at first, I just thought it was spiritual. It was some spiritual being. I did not think it was Jesus at first. I just thought it was some wonderful spiritual being in their midst. And of course, um, it was a Pentecostal church. So they were speaking in tongues and so on. Healings were taking place. Prophecy was given. And I was like, wow, these guys are really <laughs> psychic, <laughs> I thought. But at the same time, I thought, they're dealing with some higher type of spirit guide here, some higher type of angel than, than I've ever encountered. Um, and, I, and I was fascinated, especially with the gift of tongues. Now, the guy who, funnily enough, the next door taking place at the same time was a spiritualist meeting, and yet I was oh. in that Christian meeting that night and not the spiritualist meeting. That was just a coincidence, but I found that quite interesting. Um, 
the guy, the Christian evangelist who had the gift of prophecy, picked a few people out of the congregation and gave them words of knowledge, words of wisdom, so on. Picked me out and said to me, uh, the Lord was going to use me, use my intelligence. Um, stuff about my calling and my ministry, I can't really remember the wording now because we're going back 26 years. But at the time I was like, wow, because as far as I was concerned, I was a spiritualist. I was wanting to promote New Age and spiritualism. I was not wanting a calling in a ministry to promote the gospel around the world. So it just didn't quite, <laughs> but I didn't forget. Um, and that night I went home and some of the things people had been saying about, you know, the Bible shows that Satan can even masquerade as if an angel of light. Demons can masquerade as all these other beings. They deceive people. It's a very real phenomena. The, the, the word spiritualism was in the Bible. The word witchcraft was in the Bible in the Old Testament, which I didn't know. Um, it did make me wonder, is this actually what is taking place? Are my mother and I being deceived? by demons posing as the dead, posing as spirit guides, alien gods. So I was rather shook up. And that night, I, when I got home, all the entities in my house were out to get me. Mm. I just felt that they were going to kill me. And I was terrified. The presence yeah. of the evil was so bad. Um, my husband was, he's a doctor. He was working um, night shift that night in hospital. So I was alone. Our child was now staying at his grandparents, Paul's mm -hmm. parents, not mine. Um, so I kept the light on. I kept the light on all night and I really felt they wanted to kill me. I picked up the Bible and I looked through and I found, I found verses that did talk about these things. So I was like, wow. I've been seriously deceived. This is just horrendous. I can't tell you how bad that felt. Um, and I literally prayed, God, if you are real, Jesus Christ really is the saviour. Um, please show me and please show me what to do next. Wow. So I was attacked during the night by demons, as you can imagine, because they knew they were losing me. They knew I was coming to the truth and they knew what was happening. Yeah. Same thing happened to my mother. I'll go back to that in a minute when, when she came to this stage. So the very next day, the doorbell rang and I answered the door and it was a lady who she called herself a Roman a gypsy, a traveler, and she would come around the neighborhood perhaps once a year, come to the door and ask to read your palm, foretell your future, all that psychic stuff which I, of course, loved. So when she came to the door, I was like, wow, because during the night, I kept seeing her face. Wow. I kept seeing her face. Now, bearing in mind, I was now praying to Jesus mm. and asking him if he was real and asking him to show me the truth. I kept seeing her face, and I didn't know yet that was Jesus answering me. I just thought, why do I see her face? She's a psychic medium. How will that help me? She came to the door the next day and she said to me, she didn't know my name, but she knew my face. Jesus Christ sent me here today to tell you I have come out of the new age, occult. I have stopped channeling ghosts, spirit guides. Wow. He has shown me. I am no longer psychic. Those abilities are gone. They were not gifts. They were curses. Yes, they were abilities, but they were yeah. demonic and those gifts have gone. I cannot tell you a future anymore. I cannot do this and that can I come in and talk to you? So I was like, yes. <laughs> he came in. Praise, God. Wow. Praise God. We had coffee. She told me her testimony, how she and a whole lot of other Romani gypsies that she knew in her family and, and around Scotland were indeed coming out of all of that, getting born again. Jesus Christ was setting them free from these demons, etc. So I was like, whoa, stunned. <laughs> Amen. I had a similar experience. <laughs> it was the time I was on an extreme spiritual warfare because I began to uh, lean on Jesus more and I didn't quite know him at that time.
but um, I was waking up to all the deception and coming out of it all. And I remember this time I was in my living room and so much, um, such bad things were happening around us at that time. And I was crying out to Jesus, Jesus, make it all go away and, and stop this. And I felt hands around my neck from something I couldn't see. And it was choking me. And I was coughing and coughing and spluttering. I couldn't get my breath. And poor old Mickey was like, what's happening? What's happening? And I couldn't even talk to him because I couldn't get my breath. And I thought, I, I just felt like I was about to die in that moment. And it went for about 10 minutes and it was just pressure around my neck. It was horrible. And after that is when um, I said to Jesus, we have to get out of this place because this place had become infested with demons. Things were happening in that house. Every morning I would wake up, the pictures on the wall were 45 degree angles. Every one of them, not just one, but all of them. I'd have to straighten them up every day. Um, lights were flickering, things were moving. It was just horrible. Um, but that's when Jesus really pulled through and started to show me. And I just asked to move us to a different house. And we did. And I got that house like a miracle it was. Um, and we moved. And slowly, um, it's almost like a trickle feed. Your mind starts to see the deceptions. And it, it took time. It wasn't instant, but more and more, I finally came to Jesus. So thank God. Thank God. Hey, you guys, you guys, you just reminded me of a scripture in Revelation. And, and you know, Lee, you said Jesus, I think you said something like Jesus has showed himself or like he was pulling through. But what's interesting is he's always there. Yeah. He was there through the whole time waiting for us because he gives us free will. Yeah. To, he doesn't want a bunch of robots. He, he wants people to want him and understand who he is. And it says in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. So he's just waiting for us, right? Mm. And we're all knuckleheads. Yeah. And we have to, we have to, we have to, <laughs> we have to go down that long and winding road sometimes, mm. but he's so patient and he loves us so much. And as soon as we're ready to commit ourselves to him and ask him, we've, we've all done the same thing. We got to our wits end and we said, help me. I can't do this anymore. And as soon as we open, we knock and we, he opens and he, open, he opens that door. Then you know the truth mm. and the truth will set you free. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Laura, yeah. testimonies like yours. Mm. This is why we do what we do. Praise God. Because these testimonies, when we share these, this is the next person's hope. Mm -hmm. When they hear these, they know there is a hope. This is why they're so powerful and they're so important to be able to record and share for those people. Another thing that I want to people to understand is in your testimony you talked about what got you to start questioning was you started seeing things that didn't make sense things mm -hmm. that didn't that didn't register right in other words those are what we call the red flags yeah and you start looking at those red flags and you, they start adding up okay those are seeds of doubt Okay, and, and did you have to, once you build that, that, that volume of doubt, that's when you start breaking that belief. This is how we work with bringing people out of what they are part of. And you probably work the same way. Once you start planting those seeds of doubt in what they're part of, that starts breaking it down, what their belief system is. And you just have to be able to start dropping those seeds of doubt in there and they start growing. And the next thing you know, they start going, Whoa, wait a minute, this doesn't mm -hmm. look so good anymore. And it's, we help them along. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us came to it on our own, but because we all work together, 
it gives us that ability to plant those seeds as a group when we work yes. with somebody. And what you're doing, Laura, yeah. in, in, in speaking out and being bold like you are, I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's exactly what needs to happen and the timing of this, right? Just like your father, just like you're here sitting here today, speaking to people who are going to watch this and the Lord will work through you and he'll continue to work through you until the end. And he's going to work in all of our lives until what he's planned to do with our lives is complete. And that's a promise that's in his word. So praise God, you're, you're, just, you're just a blessing. How is, how, how is your relationship with Jesus right now? And how does your husband feel about Jesus? Well, we are, you know, <clears throat> together in, in ministry. Um, we, just a couple of years ago, we went to Mexico um, to share there, shared my testimony there. And of course, that's a country that has a lot of um, mm. different forms of death cults uh, yes. more than anything else. But they have a very prominent uh, UFO alien type belief system going on there because Mexico has had a lot of that. Um, yes. Interesting, we found that places um, where, whether it was the Aztecs or the Mayans or whatever, ancient civilizations, interesting that places where there were human sacrifices, the Egyptians, of course, too, people often forget that, the ancient Egyptians, human sacrifice and uh, witchcraft and spiritualism were obviously rife mm -hmm. there. Um, we know that as a fact. Human sacrifices, often it's like, I would describe it as a, as a demonic hot spot. That often you find where so-called UFOs and aliens mm -hmm. uh, visit. That place historically has been a demonic hot spot for generations. Mm. Um, so find that very interesting. Um, I'm sorry, I, I didn't let Joe, I, I interrupted Joe. His question about the red flags, right, Joe? I, I'm interested in, into that and breaking down. Yep. Maybe we can address it, Joe's question. What you were seeing, you were starting to question what was really so, going on. What yeah, was, yeah, absolutely. Exactly what you're <clears throat> saying. You started to, to question. Um, and the fact that my mother was in the psychiatric hospital obviously was devastating too. And the Spiritualist Church said they couldn't help us. They didn't know how to, to stop the so-called ghosts, so-called alien spirit guides attacking us. So that was a red flag. Why could they not? And we knew a lot of people, New Age community, Spiritualist community in Scotland, and none of them seemed to be able to help. Um, so all of this culminated in, as you say, what, what happened? Well, when that woman came to me the next day after I prayed, after I'd been to the church and I prayed to Jesus, she came the next day. So it was a day or two after that that I gave my heart to the Lord. I didn't right away because I thought, is it really true about Jesus and the Bible? And I don't want to just be getting deceived again. But I discovered that, wow, true enough, there is historical records, there are archaeological records, scholars around the world who have indeed, and they're called apologetics, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to check that out, the whole um, school of apologetics are people who, and as Joe mentioned earlier, Lee Strobel, mm -hmm. classic book, The Case for Christ. Yeah. I, I just realised, hey, this is actually true. It is actually true. Um, and so I did ask Jesus into my life um, and I stopped. I had um, deliverance, evil spirits were cast out. I, not a whole lot in the beginning though. Um, then what happened was my mother, she got out of the psychiatric hospital. She went home. She started coming to the church that I was now going to, a uh, uh, Pentecostal church I had now joined. Mm -hmm. that my friend took me to. My mother started coming sometimes. The, de the demons were still there. The demonic was still taking place. It was not totally done. It was not totally finished. Um, even though we asked Jesus into our life. Why? Because there had not been a, a praying to cut curses, cast these demons out, etc. The church didn't believe in that. Um, 
they did believe in healing and prophecy and tongues, but they didn't really believe that we could have demons because we were now Christian. Mm. So there was a lack of deliverance ministry. We tried other places to help us, same story. None of the churches thought it was possible. You know, I, I felt like saying, well, but, but I'm a brand new Christian and I can see it in the Bible. Jesus and the disciples cast yeah. out demons. Why yeah. is it? What? <laughs> so well, anyway, yeah. long story short, long story <laughs> short, my mother continued to be harassed and she killed herself. Oh my God. So sad. These churches and, are so unequipped. Yes. And that's why, and that was now, well, 1996. Since then, I have came across this again and again and again. Mm -hmm. People get saved, come to Jesus, get born again, come out the new age or the old cult, still get the demonic problems in their house. Yes, like you say, often it just takes you saying in the name of Jesus Christ and it leaves and that's it. But a lot of times you actually have to have the demons cast out of you. Mm. And a lot of churches just don't. So in all that time, I've always been emphasizing the, the dire need for the deliverance ministry in the church. And especially in these last days when things are getting so demonic. Mm. Because it saves people's lives. There's yeah. so many people I've heard of in the last 15 years who have been suicidal. We're in psychiatric wards or did commit suicide because the Christian church did not get them set free mm. from demons. This you know, has been, sorry, go ahead, Jason. No, just real quick, because I, I want to I wanna ask Joe about this too. Um, as an early Christian, when we're coming out of this thing, we are early, we are early and again, I don't have any, um, I don't really have a lot of experience with the deliverance ministry. Um, I watch, and I'm, fam I'm familiar with it, I'm getting to know about the, the delivery uh, ministry and I know there's power behind that and I know that there's demon position possession and there's demon oppression mm -hmm. in tandem with that though as Joe as the team has found out and Joe speaks of quite often is the doors right so when we're new believers not saying that this is what happened but this can happen we haven't quite shut all the doors yet sometimes and when we don't shut all the doors we're leaving ourselves open to oppression um, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, expert on oppression and possession, but I do know one thing that the doors that we open that allow these things to come into our lives, if they're not shut completely, then things will linger on. And that does give these evil entities a ticket to continue to hang around. At least that's my understanding. However, I took, I completely, I mean, my heart goes out to you and and your family and, and for people to, because you're so vulnerable, right? When you're, especially when you're a new Christian and you're, you're, you're seeking the Lord and, and you need this, you need people, you need good, you need good, strong Christians around you to help support you. I did. And luckily he put a bunch of men in my life at that time, but yeah, it's incredible because if, if you can't find that, you, you feel it's, it's a, t it can be a tough road. It can be, it can, it can be a tough road. Well, we find that we find that now, that's the problem that we're seeing now. And, and Laura talked about that too, is she talked about it earlier is, is in the past couple decades, the infiltration of the enemy into the Christian mm -hmm. church with all of its new age practices and just rewrapping the new age practices in a pseudo Christian wrapping, you know, so a new believer coming into the church, you know, accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and savior, expecting to be surrounded by true believers they end up getting surrounded by pseudo christians mm. you know that are true christians so the guidance isn't going to be there the protection isn't going to be there so that's a danger that we have right now in the modern church you know that we that we're having to deal with you know i brought this up on a number of talks that i've had you know 20 some years ago when i started into this I knew where the enemy was. The enemy was deceiving people with the UFO phenomenon, okay? Mm -hmm. I wasn't seeing this in the Christian realm. But then now I spend more time battling people that are, that are teaching wrong stuff about mm -hmm. this in the Christian realm than I do helping people that where I started at, you know, where I should be. It, 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 we're on two fronts now where originally there was only one front right and it, it's 
it's it's just escalated over time. I've saw that too. Yeah. Totally, I've saw that too. Um, my husband and I are in the deliverance ministry. Um, I think I've been in the deliverance ministry now since two thousand and two, and indeed, I've definitely saw that. Um, whereby people cannot seem to get help because a lot of churches don't have the deliverance ministry. Um, and when you were saying there about uh, closing doors, my mother and I had closed doors, but the demons were there. They had not been cast out yet. They still had to be cast out. And mm. this is what the pastors were confused about. They assumed the very second you become a Christian, you must completely be suddenly free from demons the very second. But when you look into this a little bit more, the very second someone gets born again, are they instantly healed of all their physical diseases? No. No, you don't see someone getting born again and suddenly they have deliverance and all these demons are cast out the very moment they're saved. That still needs to take place. And that was the case for my mother and me. Mm. I did get that deliverance eventually, but it took a while till I found a church that could do that, that believed in that. However, my mother didn't, and that's why she, she killed herself. And as, as Joe says, now we are also dealing with Christians who are doing all sorts of things they think are biblical, but they're not. And they have even, once they're shown the error of it, have went through deliverance because they have actually been in communion with demons. The Bible says in the last days, um, the Spirit says in the last days, people will abandon the faith and uh, you know, be deceived by doctrines of demons. My right. people perish through lack of knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. Also, Paul was always warning about do not be deceived, be, be aware of the sa Satan's tactics so you're not deceived. So, so many people who are born again have actually had to get deliverance because they've been doing occult stuff they didn't even realize was occult stuff. And that is a big part of um, what I see taking place and what I have minister deliverance to people because they have been involved in things even as a christian mm. which has been new age mm. and demonic that's I, a, um, that's a key point and i want to i want to grab that key point before we go into anything else that key point right there i want to show you that from a from a secular person recognizing that okay and you brought up a couple quotes earlier and I'm going to bring up another one of those quotes from one of the people that you talked about. Um, before I forget it, you quoted from Whitley Strieber from his book, Transformation. Uh, Whitley, by the way, was a New York Times bestseller of the book Communion, yep. um, oh, the yeah. one with the alien on the cover that just rocked a lot of people's lives and changed a lot of people's worldviews when that book came out. Even though what you read from Whitley describing that experience and how horrific it was and how it affected him. He went on to promote contact for the next two decades. Okay. So it didn't change him. Now you mentioned Heineck, you mentioned ballet. I've got a quote here from ballet that is really important. And this one comes from messengers of deception. Remember, we're, we've mentioned this word over and over and over in this show. Deception, 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 deception. Even the secular people see it. And this is, this is your pioneer of ufology right here. You know, human beings are under the control of a strange force that bends them in absurd ways, forcing them to play a role in a bizarre game of deception. And that's from Dr. Jack Ballet, Messengers of Deception. That is a powerful quote to mm -hmm. come from a secular person to recognize that. Now, yes. what does God say about that? Let's see what God says about the same word deception. Because this is what I feel that's happening here. And we've talked about this amongst the group. I'm not saying this is what we, this is actually what's happening, but I'm saying that people should take a look at what God says about this. 
I believe this is a possibility that this is where we're at. This is what we're seeing. If you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? We'll start at just chapter 2, or uh, verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, whether by spirit, nor by word, or by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity both already doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who's coming after the working of Satan with all power in signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, but they might be saved. And this is the key part. And for this cause... God, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Jason, in Revelation, you said that Jesus stands at the door and knocks. People, you better answer that door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not a matter of if we're there, we're there, you guys. The world is setting the stage before our eyes. And if you know the truth, if you don't, please ask for the truth. And if you're confused and you're scared and you don't know what's happening, ask, just ask, Lord Jesus Christ, show me the truth of what's happening to this world and in my life. I'm telling you, if you seek him, with all your heart and all he's your mind, there. he's there. He will answer you. He will give you the answer. And it's such the time, you guys. Oh, it's this <laughs> the time. Uh, what real Lee? I, 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 we keep cutting you off. Oh, we love you, Lee. We love you. I'm sorry to cut you off. I got to do this one more time. I got to do this, and I need you. And actually, I need you and Laura. When I uh, this goes back to the, the deliverance thing because I know Lee has has is part of a part of deliverance as well. There's been many times where I've talked to my wife and I've said, I can't believe that it, that towards that, and you guys all know what I'm talking about, when it, when it gets really heavy, when they're, when they're just tracking on, they're just tracking and you're, you get, you're really full of fear when, when they're attacking you hard. And this was before the end, I was going a little cuckoo and I tell her now, I can't believe, I feel like, I, I feel like they could have possessed me. And eight years later, <clears throat> and having this conversation with you guys, when I came out of that and I was being shepherded by these men, these strong Christian men, they sat me down and they asked me a question after I gave my testimony. And they said, they said, do you believe, they looked at me and said, we need to ask you a question. And I think they were probing to see if I had, had demons in me. They said, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose with you. And I said, yes. And they, they, were, they were looking at me. But after talking to you guys today and after thinking about this, the missing piece to my story is, and I believe this to be true now, is when I was a young child, I went to a Christian school and I, and I asked Jesus into my heart. I think I was about nine or 10 years old, but I really did have a moment and I'll never forget what happened. Now, I didn't understand the word like I do now. I didn't understand what I know now, but I did come to him as a child and I do believe I had an experience. All this to say, if I hadn't have done that as a child and I went through the experience of my testimony, I probably would have been able to be 
demon possessed and I would have demons be live inside me because I didn't, I think I had the Holy spirit in me, even though I was going, I was being oppressed. I had had that transformation as a child, but a lot of people like you, you, you didn't have any experiences like that. You needed to have these things cast out of you. So may, maybe there's a difference there that I'm starting to see. And I don't know, praise God that, that I, I had that experience I'm, when I was a child. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, Jason, because I've always loved God and Jesus. And always my whole life was talking to Jesus, right? But I didn't okay. know him in a personal relationship. And Same here, Lee. And because of that, I got entangled into the web of new age, not knowing it was new age at that time. Right. And I went down that road, right? Yeah. And yeah. I became demonized from all the spiritual garbage that I was entangled with. Sure. And... So what happened to me, and I do believe in deliverance ministry because I've seen it for myself. I've lived it. I've breathed it. I've, I've been delivered. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've seen things happen in the church where, where people were called down to the front of the prayer and there was a woman and she was writhing on the floor and mm -hmm. she was screaming obscenities. And the pastor just cringed and moved away and looked at her. And I said to pastor, this is when I was just new to Christ. And I, mm -hmm. I said to pastor, and I knew that woman had a demon. And I said to pastor, are you going to do something? And he said, oh, she's just like that all the time. And I was floored. Wow. Oh boy. I was floored. And of course I left that church not long after because right. I think I saw... I think I saw many red flags. Sure. And it got me thinking. And once I, I really came in my walk with Jesus, um, I started my service new to Christ because people need deliverance and they've got nowhere to go hmm. because churches Amen. don't openly accept them and say, sure, we can help you. They don't. Hmm. It's very few no. and far between that will take the person and help them with deliverance. And um, for me, Jesus told me I needed prayers. And I looked online. I knew it was a special prayer. And I found a deliverance prayer and I did it. I did it morning and night. And on the third day, a demon came out of me. It lifted off my shoulders and floated away. And I felt different. That's how I knew I was delivered. And I praise God. Amen. So Hallelujah. Just, just through fasting and prayer, I was delivered. And it can be done that way too. Um, in fact, some demons will only come out through fasting and prayer. Amen. But, yes. but deliverance is important. I believe in it. Jesus told us that's what we should be doing. And um, oh, I think it's fascinating. I yeah. think it's great. I, I believe in it. Uh, geez, Joe, I hope I don't have any demons left in me. Maybe we're going to have to do another show. Maybe we'll do a deliverance show for me. However, I think I think, I, yeah. I think what we're talking about here is you know in Scripture it, call, it talks about there are different aspects of the church. There are those that are called as teachers, those that are called as preachers, those that are called as different parts of the church. And I think okay. there's a reason that there's different parts of the church, because there's different people in the church that need different things. And I think that's what we need to be looking at here. Not everybody needs that. I don't, I have not seen a need in everybody that I have dealt with that needed to go through a deliverance. I don't see that in the people that I've worked with. There may have been some that needed it that may have moved on and got that. I that I didn't hear back from. But I don't I don't need that I don't see that it has been an absolute need for every single person. I do believe that there are people that might require that. I have no doubt. But that's not been my calling to deal with that. If it came to be that I came across somebody in that situation, right. yeah, I would have to look to the next person that does that. Right. Personally, what I what 
That's really interesting. And what I have found um, has actually been that, and as, as I say, I've been in deliverance ministry now for 20 years, and what I have found that the majority of people do actually need deliverance and they might not all get it straight away and they might not all get it through through me, for example. They may move on and find someone later on that does it with them or, or whatever. Sometimes people eventually find me because they've been suffering with problems for, for years uh, and haven't been free. But I, I think as well, sometimes people can get a little alarmed, but it's completely natural should be natural we are meant to be naturally supernatural and through the new testament jesus the disciples the apostles later on they never specified hey this is just for the non-christian mm -hmm. they didn't say you know yes we see in, in act 16 paul um act 16 the the fortune teller girl had the spirit of divination cast out her and people could say, well, she wasn't a Christian. But there are, are accounts of Christians who do need deliverance, like I say. Otherwise, the very second you get born again, the very second you get born again, demons should come out of you. It doesn't all, sometimes happens at an altar call, but usually not. Usually it's uh, later on it happens. Um, there's nothing, there's no stigma, I don't think, about it because it's perfectly natural for Jesus and the disciples to do that. Um, that there shouldn't be no shame. I went through a lot of deliverance myself um, that I received. And the difference I think people get a bit confused about, they think, well, does that mean you're demon possessed if you've got demons in you? No, demon possession is rare. Um, like the, the legion and the demoniac, remember where Jesus went across no. the boat mm -hmm. and he yeah. was tied up in chains and so on totally like really practically lost his mind yes possessed also because he did not have the holy spirit so mm -hmm. but as a christian you're born again you have the holy spirit um you can be oppressed meaning yes demons can still be inside the christian but it does not mean the christian is possessed because you also have the holy spirit there along with the demons so you cannot be possessed can there still be demons there yes happens time and time again but um, the, the wonderful truth is that, that Jesus does set us free. And there's people who have had deliverance in their early days as a Christian and yet went on and later had more deliverance later on. And hmm. it's not that, oh, they weren't really saved or, no, they were saved. True. <laughs> um, it's just that hmm. I would say it's almost like the sanctification process yeah. of us maturing as Christians and so on, and that sanctification is a lifelong process. We don't get born sure again is. and then we wake up <laughs> suddenly perfect. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. I, I would well, you know, you're right. You're right, Laura, because uh, like it says in Ephesians, we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against powerless, but we put on the full armor of God, right? The belt of truth, the gospel of peace at our feet, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. We stand, we proclaim, and we stand for the Lord because it's a constant battle. We're being, never we're, goes we're, away. We're, we're going to be fighting yeah. demons all the time. Hey, praise God for you ladies. And if there's people out there that feel like they need deliverance, this show is awesome because you can reach out to, um, I'm sure Lee's going to leave her contact information as well as Laura's. And if, if there's a question about deliverance or if there's a need for deliverance, these ladies are absolutely fantastic at what they do they know they know what they're doing and i think that you guys are going to be a great re resource for people out there who think that they need it that they you know are going to need something like this in their lives so this is great this is good and i think as well you know the bible Definitely. shows that it was a big part of of the ministry of the early church and it, it, <clears throat> the person doesn't need to have a demon just because they were involved in witchcraft and the old cult sometimes right. it would be hereditary problems sometimes it would even be illnesses mm -hmm. We know the stories in the Bible where Jesus cast out demons and suddenly the person would be healed. And mm. often a person can be healed through yeah. deliverance. When I was in Mexico with my husband, about 90 people out of this church, 100 people were in the church, 90 people came out for deliverance because mm. after hearing a testimony like mine, they mm. realized they had done stuff or their ancestors had done stuff mm. in witchcraft. They needed deliverance from 
everyone got deliverance. But not only that, people who had health issues got mm. deliverance. I prayed Praise with God. a man. I do not know Spanish at all. This man had something wrong with his back. I can't remember now if it was his kidneys or something. Some health issue in his back. The pastor who was translating for me went with me along the line as we prayed for everyone. And I prayed in tongues with each person. I did not know in tongues I was speaking perfect mm -hmm. Spanish. Wow. Perfect Mexican of that dialect. Um, we were in, what was the name of the place? The second most occult hotspot place in Mexico. It wasn't Vera Cruz. Vera Cruz, it was the next one. Carateral, mm -hmm. the second mm -hmm. worst occult hotspot in Mexico, Carateral. Yeah. I said to that man, as I was praying in tongues, the phrase came out of me in Spanish, demon come out of his back. I don't know Spanish. Mm. The demon came out of his back and the man felt that area, the healing of the Lord, and he was healed of that condition, whatever it was. Now, the others around me knew I was speaking in Spanish. I didn't. Point being, all the gifts of the Spirit are available to the church and can be used to set people free and especially people who are coming in, who have been involved in New Age and occult, but not just them, but obviously our heart is, is for them the most. Praise God, praise God. All the glory to yeah. him, all yep. the glory to him. Praise God, for sure. Wow. Yeah, another great show, Laura. Man, just gets better <laughs> and better. Wow, God is so good, God is so good. Yeah. Thank you, Laura, so much for, for coming on. And you've been such a blessing to the audience. Seriously. I mean, yes. Laura, what, oh, what do you got in the future? Yeah. Um, well, more TV, radio, God willing, more um, anytime I'm asked to contribute to a magazine, whatever I do. Interestingly, I've never been paid for anything I've done. <laughs> I don't make a lot of money out of books or anything. Um, go back to Mexico. Um, and other countries when the you know what situation uh, changes etc um, but really my heart is anybody who's been listening to this and suddenly realizes I have been deceived um, no matter what God you thought you were worshipping mm -hmm. the Bible says all of these gods are false gods demons and you can be set free I would urge you with all of my heart to please ask Jesus Christ into your heart, not the cosmic new age Christ, not the Christ consciousness, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Ask him into your heart to forgive you because yeah. why, why do you need to even bother? You might say, number one, what is the main thing ghosts and so-called aliens teach? What do they teach? They have a spiritual gospel, a false gospel. They teach that when you die, there is no heaven and hell. Yep. And that you do not need Jesus to be, right. to be saved. Yeah to have your sins washed clean and to be saved. But there is a heaven and hell and Jesus is real. And all of us are destined for hell, the Bible shows, unless we are forgiven by Jesus Christ. Because heaven is such a pure place, even one sin would stop you from getting into heaven. One sin. Jesus Christ died on the cross to, to, to wash you free and allow you to come to him and come to heaven. So please ask Jesus into your heart and he will set you free from all these things we've talked about amen wow thank you laura thank you for today i think the topics we have covered yeah is everything we could think of um <laughs> it's just been amazing and i hope that the discussions have answered some people's questions or perhaps they've even asked more questions but soon we're going to do live shows um, and Laura would love to have you on a live show. Um, so we'll definitely get you back for that. And Thank we have you. a, uh, we have a newsletter we're getting ready to start putting together and uh, it'll go out to all of our email list. And we'd like to actually invite you to be part of our newsletter and we'll, I'll keep in touch with you on that. So I'll send you an email and I'll have you, Give me anything you've got coming up, your shows that are coming up, and we'll post them in our email along with stuff that we've got going on too, so that we can get it out to all of our followers too. 
it, I, I have no problem and I'd love to be able to promote your work right alongside with ours. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm very, very honored and thank you so much. And yes, I do promote your work. I interviewed you three years ago, Joe, <laughs> and the <laughs> one show turned into six shows. <laughs> um, so I just got the book Come Sail Away With Me by Guy Malone. Um, UFO expert, he was in the New Age, he lives in Roswell, the whole shebang, he experienced yeah. all this too, he got saved by Jesus, he came out. Joe's book, which is winging its way to me right now, yep. um, so yeah, and you know, listening to Ian Juby today on YouTube, as, as you mentioned earlier, and his, his episode today was called The Alien Gospel. And I yep. thought that's exactly what it is. And the whole world will be deceived when we have these things, even the Pope talking about it, mm. um, Obama mm. talking about it, whatever, that of course people are going to fall away, the great falling away. Of course Christians are going to fall away too when they okay. think mm. there are alien gods out there. Jesus was just an alien god. The Virgin Mary was impregnated by an alien Yes, there are Christians who will fall away, but the truth is what we have shared with you tonight. Absolutely. Man. Thank, thank you, Laura. Give your contacts before we uh, finish up here so people can know how to reach you yes. and uh, see your work. Um, my blog is ourspiritualquest.com, ourspiritualquest.com. And my YouTube is Laura Maxwell, ex-spiritualist. And I'm on Facebook, friends with, with Joe Jordan as well. And Lee will put them up there on the, at the end of the show for everybody to have them so yeah. they don't miss them. Yeah. Well, that wraps it up. Thanks again, everybody, for coming back. And, and <laughs> um, for everybody Great that show. is out there, that's awesome. And um, we'll leave it. We'll leave it with this. Everybody who's out there watching this show today, no matter what you're going through um, in this life right now, no matter what, no matter what, what struggles that you you may be enduring, um, just remember one thing, and that's that Jesus loves you. Bye, everyone. Amen.